Hello everyone. Back again with film recaps. In this video, I'm going to recap one of the horror thriller films from 2018, titled Primal Rage. Before we get to the storyline, I'd like to wish everyone a happy and great day. Without further ado, let's get straight to the storyline. The movie opens with a beautiful woman named Ashley arriving outside a prison. She is here to pick up her husband, Maxwell, who has just been exonerated. Once he gets inside the vehicle, the two start their long journey back home. Ashley appears to be mad at him for his past actions, but Maxwell eventually wins her over with his charm and quirky jokes. This arouses Ashley, and she ends up having intercourse with him in the backseat. Later, they pull over at a gas station, and Maxwell goes inside the store to get some food. There, we see the local sheriff with a missing persons poster, but the shop owner claims that it is the doing of the mythical Bigfoot. The sheriff obviously doesn't believe in this, and there are several other posters on the wall, indicating that a lot of people have gone missing in the recent months. When Maxwell comes out of the store, a bunch of locals greet him with hostility. They call him a convict, and make derogatory gestures at him. Nonetheless, Maxwell doesn't react and he simply gets into the car. The couple then resumes their journey, and they soon arrive in the middle of a dense forest. To cool himself off, Maxwell whips out a can of beer. But as the couple is arguing over him starting to drink again. The car suddenly hits someone. They nervously go outside to check, only to find a mutilated and bloodied man. Maxwell feels sorry for the guy, but he believes their car didn't do all this. Meanwhile, we learn that someone is keeping an eye on the couple. Ashley decides to inform the cops about the situation, but Maxwell tries to stop her, claiming they might get into trouble. Despite this, she calls the nearest police station, and urges them to come right away. At this moment, Maxwell spots something creepy in the woods, but then someone starts throwing stones at him. As he tries to peek, he is hit in the face by a large rock, sending him tumbling down a slope, and he eventually falls into the nearby river. Ashley quickly goes after her husband and spots him lifeless in the water. This prompts her to jump into the dangerous river. She manages to grab him, but the job is only half done as the currents are too strong. Nonetheless, Ashley somehow manages to navigate through the waves, until she reaches the shore with her husband. She then frantically performs CPR on him, bringing him back to life. Maxwell is disoriented by the knock, and he doesn't know how he ended up here. Back on the road, we catch a glimpse of the perpetrator, which is a gigantic hairy being. He single-handedly pushes the couple's stranded vehicle down the slope, and drags the mutilated corpse away. At the police station, the local sheriff talks to his deputy about the recent missing cases, and mentions the Bigfoot stories he's been hearing from people. The deputy, who turns out to be a Native American, claims that the stories might be true, and in their community, they have named the beast as Oma. However, the sheriff doesn't believe in supernatural stuff. He is then informed about the distress call received from the woods earlier, so he goes to the location to investigate. Back at the river shore, Maxwell's condition has still not improved. But fortunately, Ashley finds a lighter in his pocket, and uses it to light a small fire. She then removes her clothes and sticks to her husband, after which his condition finally begins to improve. Up on the road, the sheriff arrives and begins his investigation. He finds no one around. But when he looks down the slope, he spots the overturned car. After concluding his search, the sheriff calls his deputy and requests for urgent backup. The scene then cuts to the night, where the sheriff learns that the damaged car's driver is Ashley, and that her husband is a convict. Down at the riverside, the couple decides to spend the night here, and they'll look for help in the morning. When the sun rises, Maxwell has completely recovered from his injuries, but Ashley finds that her clothes, which were just lying on the ground, have gone missing. Maxwell doesn't remember taking it, and he simply gives her his tank top to cover her body. Before they begin their journey, Ashley goes to take a leak, while the Bigfoot lurks right behind her, watching her pervertedly. He then scoops up the mud containing her urine and smells it. Following this, the couple decides to follow the river until they reach the road. But it's not going to be an easy job at all, because the terrain is very harsh. Later, we see them deep in the forest. 
wherever they go, the Bigfoot is keeping an eye on them from a distance, and we even get to see his face. After a bit of wandering around, the couple hears some men chattering nearby. Ashley immediately recognizes them as the same troublemakers from the gas station, turns out they've come here on a hunting expedition. Maxwell knows that they're bad people, but he has no choice but to approach them for help. At the police station, the sheriff finds the whole situation weird as the couple crash their car in the middle of the woods and just vanished. But the deputy believes that it's Bigfoot who's responsible for their disappearance. The sheriff calls it bullshit, but the deputy urges him to pay a visit to the whispering woman, as the forest is her turf. She might have some information about the missing people. The deputy also claims that she is immortal, and has been living in the forest since ages. Back in the forest, Maxwell decides to talk to the hunters alone, while Ashley stays hidden behind a fallen tree. Here the troublemakers immediately start making fun of him. When Maxwell asks if he can use their phone, all of them begin making excuses. The group's leader, BD, claims no cell phones work in this area because of poor signal. At this point, Maxwell is fed up by their behavior and he simply asks them for directions. Ashley is observing quietly from a distance. But then suddenly, we can get him there in about an hour. Ashley doesn't notice the Bigfoot, but she certainly felt someone's presence, so she immediately runs to her husband. Seeing her partially undressed and vulnerable, the rowdy men begin catcalling her. Their leader, BD then announces that they will be heading back to their truck which is a few hours walk away from here. He even provides Ashley with a jacket to keep her warm. Elsewhere, the sheriff is at a garage, and he notices some claw marks on the couple's vehicle, making him realize that something's out there in the woods. Afterwards, the deputy reveals that an elderly Native American woman has been diagnosed with cancer, so the tribe is holding a traditional healing ceremony for her. The deputy suggests that they go and attend it for some enlightenment. Meanwhile, the couple and the hunters are still walking through the deep forest. Bigfoot is closely observing them from the sidelines, while BD and his boys continue tormenting and making fun of Maxwell's convict status. During this, one of the hunters named Gordy goes to take a leak, and rushes into the woods along with a friend. BD then orders another guy to accompany them. Inside the woods, Gordy proceeds to take a leak while his friend keeps watch. But then all of a sudden, a whooshing sound is heard, and when Gordy goes to check his friend, he shockingly finds an arrow penetrating his neck, leading to his demise. However, before Gordy can react, Bigfoot fires another arrow at him. It goes straight through Gordy's neck and pins him against a tree. Then, the giant beast himself shows up and comes face to face with Gordy. He ultimately finishes the hunter off by brutally mashing his head like a potato. Soon, the third guy comes looking for his friends. He doesn't find them, but spots something running in the woods. Scared, he immediately brings out his gun, and tries to hide behind a tree, but Bigfoot finds him, and brutally decapitates his head with an axe. In the meantime, the remaining hunters are busy troubling the couple, while Ashley tries to defend her husband. Just then, one of the hunters inexplicably drops to the floor. The others are horrified to discover an arrow right through his face, and this prompts the group to quickly bring out their guns and prepare for combat. One of them spots the Bigfoot and starts firing at him, but none of his shots connect, while Maxwell urges his wife to go and hide somewhere else. A scared hunter abandons his comrades and makes a run for it. Unfortunately, the only hunter who has seen the Bigfoot ends up firing at his own friend. Here Bigfoot finally shows up and slits the armed hunter's throat. Ashley then returns to check on her knocked out husband, but this turns out to be a costly mistake. The creature goes after her and chases her through the forest. At one point, she hides in a ditch, where coincidentally the coward hunter is also hiding. Bigfoot eventually finds them, and he tears off the poor man's face. Up next, Ashley still tries to run away, but Bigfoot manages to catch her using his classic arrow, and take her with him. While returning, Bigfoot spots the unconscious Maxwell and prepares to finish him off. But before he can do so, he is shot in the arm by BD who is still alive. The hunter tries to shoot again, but Bigfoot knocks him out, and takes both the humans to his shelter. That evening, a strange woman approaches Maxwell in the woods, loads him in her wheelbarrow, and takes him away. 
she is revealed to be none other than the whispering woman. She later brings Maxwell to her creepy looking house, places the unconscious Maxwell on a bed, and begins treating him with her odd medication. Simultaneously, the sheriff and his deputy arrive at the indigenous healing ceremony, where several other people have gathered. Then, a priest starts chanting some prayers in his native tongue. The sheriff is soon given a sacred drink, which he reluctantly consumes, right when he begins hallucinating things. He sees his deputy with dark black pupils, almost as if he's been possessed, and he sees a dancing entity inside the tent, which freaks him out. The sheriff eventually loses it when he sees the priest removing the cancer out of the elderly woman's body, so he quickly goes outside the tent to catch a breather. At the same time, we are taken inside a dark cave, where Bigfoot has held the humans captive. There are also several deceased and mutilated corpses lying all around. Ashley pleads to be let go, but the beast has other intentions. First, he brutally stabs BD, and rips his heart out. Then, he approaches Ashley, tears off her clothes, and forces himself onto her. This finally reveals why he didn't kill her when he had the chance. Turns out he has a crush on her, or just wants to reproduce. The following morning, Maxwell wakes up in the cabin, and finds the sheriff next to him. The old man is now dressed as a Native American, and it appears he finally believes in all those superstitions. The sheriff reveals that Ashley has been kidnapped by Bigfoot, which is an ancient creature living in these woods. The whispering woman informed him that Bigfoot was shot in the arm and injured. This has made the beast vulnerable, so they stand a chance against him. The sheriff then proposes that they go save Ashley with weapons and fight him head on. They can't take guns though as Bigfoot can easily smell gunpowder from a distance. Following this, the two prepare their hand weapons, and rub themselves with a strange substance to hide their scent. Here the sheriff cheekily takes his gun with him, but he makes sure to rub it with the same substance. As the two men make their way out, the whispering lady begins beating her drum, just like a battle cry. Back inside the cave, Bigfoot hears the noise and gets angry, so the beast heads out to confront the enemies. Once he's out of sight, Ashley tries to free herself. Since she was tied by an ape, it doesn't take her long to get free from her constraints. She grabs some guns lying inside the cave, puts on some clothes, and heads out. Meanwhile, the men reach the middle of the forest, carrying spears in their hands. The sheriff then orders Maxwell to rescue his wife, while he goes to deal with Bigfoot alone. As soon as they go their separate ways, the sheriff spots the presence of the beast. This frightens him so he immediately ditches his indigenous spear and brings out his gun. But before he can take a shot, Bigfoot attacks him from behind, and bites his neck. Hearing the sheriff's screams, both Ashley and Maxwell rush to his location. She arrives first with a shotgun, and spots Bigfoot near his lifeless body. Ashley fires several rounds, but she misses each time. Seeing this, the Bigfoot ignores her and walks away to find the next enemy. After a while, Maxwell also arrives and the couple is relieved to see each other. But Ashley still has matters to take care of. So, she follows Bigfoot into the woods, and shoots him a couple of times. She then returns to her husband, and we can hear the beast crying out of agony. It is badly injured, but definitely not ready to give up. Realizing that they have just angered the beast, Maxwell urges his wife to run, while he distracts Bigfoot. She vehemently refuses to leave him behind, but he reminds her that one of them has to take care of their son. At the same time, Bigfoot starts approaching them from a distance, so Ashley reluctantly runs away. Now, it is Maxwell against the beast, one on one. Using the sheriff's pistol, he shoots Bigfoot several times in the chest. When he runs out of bullets, he swings an axe towards him, but misses. Scared, he makes a run for it, but accidentally gets his foot stuck in a bear trap. This leaves him in a helpless position, and he also fails to reach out for his spear. Soon, Bigfoot approaches Maxwell, and begins toying with him. He pulls the chain connected to the bear trap, causing Maxwell excruciating pain. But this also breaks the trap, allowing him to get free, and our hero manages to grab the spear. Unaware of this, Bigfoot goes near him to finally finish him off, but Maxwell takes this opportunity to spring a surprise attack. He stabs the beast several times in the chest, making him fall to the ground. Then, 
he grabs a large rock and repeatedly bashes his head, ultimately killing him. At the same time, Ashley keeps running until she reaches the road. It appears that the couple finally has a happy ending. However, when Maxwell is resting on a tree, he is suddenly pierced by some arrows. Before the film ends, we spot three massive Bigfoots coming towards Maxwell, which means there is more than one Bigfoot in the area, and their reign of terror has just begun. Okay guys, that's all the recap of Primal Rage 2018. Thanks for watching. See you again in the next video.